Starting off the news this week, a mission to the bottom of the Mariana Trench has gone deeper than any other dive ever, reaching a depth of 10,927 metres. After scouring the sea floor at this depth, it is believed that four new species of amphipod, small shrimp-like creatures, were discovered. But perhaps most notably, and worryingly, a plastic bag and some sweet wrappers were also found, prompting the scientists who collected the creatures from the Mariana Trench to analyse them for microplastics. It is unclear at the moment where much of the millions of tonnes of the plastic that enters the ocean every year ends up, but this suggests we may be able to find plastics in most of our ocean waters. In other news, Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, has revealed a Blue Moon lunar lander and the BE-7 engine that will be used for it. Bezos has said that the reusable landing craft could be available to transport people and equipment to the moon by 2024, the year that NASA has been tasked with getting to the moon by by President Trump. The idea is for the lander to get near the south pole of the moon, which would give it access to ice which can be used to refuel it and send it for more long-term missions around the solar system. Exciting stuff. In paleontology news, amber from Myanmar continues to preserve some incredible things, as the first ever ammonite in amber has been found. Usually terrestrial organisms are more likely to be trapped in amber like this, but in this specimen, which is about 99 million years old, there are quite a few marine species, including sea snails. There are also some terrestrial animals preserved here, but sadly no ammonite soft tissues remain. However, it's still an incredible discovery that opens up all sorts of possibilities for future finds. Next up, some very exciting news. You may remember that back in 2015, a new species of Scansoriopterygid dinosaur was named and described, e Chi. This fossil preserved evidence of membranous dragon or bat-like wings on the animal, an adaptation for flight that had never been seen before in dinosaurs. And now a second Scansoriopterygid with membranous wings have been named and described from the late Jurassic of China. Meet Ambopteryx longibrachium, the sister species to e Chi. The fossil provides more evidence that some theropods did indeed possess wings comparable in structure to modern bats, and stomach contents with the specimen suggest it was omnivorous, as they include both gastroliths and fragments of bone. This species was probably adapted for gliding between trees, perhaps filling a niche similar to today's flying squirrels. This paper describing Ambopteryx, published this week in Nature, also states that this type of wing probably represents a short-lived experiment with flight behaviour in this lineage, since feathered wings were later favoured during the evolution of birds. There's more flying theropod news next, as an interesting paper published this week has examined an isolated wing skeleton from the late Jurassic of Germany, the same time when the famous Archaeopteryx would have lived. This wing has been used as the basis of a new species, called Alcomavis pocheli, and displays characteristics suggesting that this animal, a non-Archaeopterygid avulan, was better adapted at flapping flight than Archaeopteryx, indicating that avulan diversity was greater than we thought during the late Jurassic. It potentially also has implications for what method of flight evolved first in Avialand. And finally, a new species of phytosaur has been described this week. These animals were a group of archosaurs related to dinosaurs and pterosaurs that lived during the Triassic period. And this new species, called Mystriosuca steinbergeri, comes from the late Triassic rocks in Austria. Four individuals have been identified from the fossils, and there are several anatomical differences that distinguish them from related species. The animals were found in sediments representing a marine lagoonal environment, and there's evidence suggesting that phytosaurs were actually living in this location. The paper therefore states that this provides the strongest evidence to date of marine adaptations in phytosaurs. Thank you very much to Anzu, Alex Raptorex, The Dinosaur Guy, Nestlig20 and Glavanicus on Discord for all the news you sent our way this week. It's been very helpful again. I do hope you enjoyed 7 Days of Science this week and if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to, to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life around you. And if you do, we'll see you on Sunday.